What's up guys and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be discussing some real estate photography tips and tricks. This one is going to be about window pools. Where I stand, where I place the light when I do a window pool, what my settings are and why. Especially if it's a really sunny day outside, you got to make some slight adjustments, but those little adjustments, it's a few extra seconds on each photo will make your client say wow when you deliver it to them. From your windows looking like this to this. So we're going to walk through the steps from taking it from your desktop, importing it into Lightroom, moving that then into Photoshop, doing our tweaking, our adjusting, our painting in the windows, and then bringing it back for some final touches and get you on the level of professional real estate photographer. So let's dive in. So you see I have my four photos here. Shift, click on the bottom one that will select them all. Right click. I use Lightroom Classic. If you already have an editing program, you can try to figure out what's similar to what I use with Adobe and stuff. But if you don't, or you're wanting to try out the Adobe CC, I pay $30 a month and I have everything. I edit my videos, uh, Spark, which is like text and stuff. So all these apps for a low $30 a month, kind of a no brainer. Down below, I'm an affiliate of Adobe. You can click my link, you can try it out. You can try it out for free, see if you like it. And if you don't, you don't have to pay. So it's no extra cost to you, just another way to help out the channel. I'd really appreciate it. So we have our photos right here. You can see that they're all highlighted. If for some reason you have some that are not, if they're dark like that, that means they are not. So make sure you have them all checked, import, once they're imported, if you push the D key on your keypad, it will automatically go to develop mode. You see right up here, it went to develop. Now let's see what my settings are. So if you're ever trying to look at your stuff and you want to know, just press I and it'll make things appear or disappear as far as the information. So I means information in Lightroom. So it's kind of cool. So let's go to the first one, go down to my real estate section now go to my full bump and what that does is it brings shadows up highlights down let's bring that about right there so this first shot if you if you're new to the channel consider subscribing but every video i usually walk through it as if you've never seen any of my videos or you don't even know what you're doing some i like to learn that way like repetition helps you learn it helps me learn so i walk through it every time sorry if you if you're advanced skip ahead so I got all this, the nice color right there. Just the, the sun was coming in and lit up the room very well. So then go over to my flash and I want to full bump as well. And you can see that I went, I don't know if you know what sync speed is. I don't know how long you've been doing this. So I'm going to kind of explain it. When you have a flash or a transmitter attached to the top of your camera, your sync speed is dependent on your camera, but nine times out of 10, it goes to 250th of a second. And then your shutter does not, you have to go to high speed sync after that. Well, we don't want to do that. But if I have a lot of sun coming in, you can see my f-stop stayed at 6.3. My ISO at 400. And then on my flash shot, my ISO is still at 400, but I brought my shutter to 250th of a second. Well, you can see the window is looking better, but it's not a good, nice, and that's just a flash shot. That's not even the window pool. A good, nice shot of the outside. I want it to be really clear so people can see exactly what's out there because that right there, you can take two shots if you want, but the window pool is what separates the beginners and the intermediates from the professionals. Now I call myself a professional. Why is that? Uh, I'll name a few things. One, I'm the sole photographer in the East Texas area and I'm going up to Oklahoma uh, the next couple weeks for McAllister's. It's a restaurant. Um, they found my work. They love me. I, I do all of their commercial work. I do it literally every single week. Like just between Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I had 10 jobs. So I'm doing it. I'm providing for my family. Obviously, I know what I'm doing because you're here because I know what I'm doing. I want you to get to the level that I am and be able to teach others because I think knowledge is a great thing and we need to share it. Moving on. So my shutter speed is 250, f6.3, ISO 400. Now you can see I'm just using a 20 millimeter. 
and I like uh, three walled shots. I think it's a lot, it mixes it up a little bit. Cause you know, usually you stand at a door frame uh, cause that's usually where you can get back the furthest and you kind of, and you can say I'm using a 20 millimeter. That's not that much. That's not that wide. Now I use a 10 to 18. So 20 millimeter, you can get a 20, 20 millimeter, pretty inexpensive comparatively to the others. So now on to the flash. Now the flash is what's going to be do a full bump. Let's bring that down. So you can see, I start bringing that exposure down a little bit. And that, that sky, I'm looking at the sky, that sky really starts popping, starts really looking nice and blue. And then I have this one over here, that's the same exposure. Let's bring the shadows up. I want that to be almost exactly. And the reason I'm doing that, my fourth shot is always my uh-oh shot. If I mess up, if I have a, a flash hitting the window a funny way or there's a little glare, I can have this shot and I, I expose it. All, I, all I'm doing is turning off the light. Look at... Look at my settings up here. And also I moved my ISO down to 320. I had the flash, same exact settings. You can see the number change on the photo, same exact settings. The only thing different is I turn my flash off because I want it to be exactly the same settings. That way when I get it in the Lightroom, I can manipulate it a little bit and it'll be ex exactly the same image on the window because that's the important part. Okay, so now let's go back over to my flash. Look at the colors, the wall looks, I mean the ceiling looks good. That looks good. You got some orange coming in from that light over there. All right, I think we're good to go. So I usually end on my fourth shot. I shift and click the first one and then right click and go into edit in all the way down to the bottom, open as layers in Photoshop. So what this will do, this is what why I love Adobe is because I can work between Lightroom and Photoshop seamlessly and it's very back and forth with no problem at all. So much so that when I click save, after I get done with my editing and flatten my image, it immediately goes back into Lightroom. I say it every video, if you don't have a little tablet thing you can write on, has a little pen with some soft keys, I have a link in the description. At no extra cost to you, I'm affiliated with Amazon. You can click on it, go searching, and whatever you pick out, or you can go shopping for water. It helps out my channel. So that would be greatly appreciated. Any of the links below are directly linked to me through Amazon, so that would be awesome of y'all. All right, so once it loads, it will automatically select that top file, or that, that first image right there, your ambient shot. So shift, click the last one, go up here to edit, auto align layers. If you've done this before, you know that the audio, auto will be auto populated, click okay. Now this is where we check, we do it very quickly. Just go and I'm looking at solid lines, the walls, the corners, the ceilings, the door jams. And don't be fooled by shadows jumping. Make sure it's not the actual lines, okay? And we're going over here. Shadows, the bed looks good. And this one's the other one. Everything looks good. The window looks great. All right, so let me go back up here. Alter option. And you put a black layer mask. Command J. It duplicates that. That one it duplicated, I go down to the very bottom and I put luminosity. Now the reason luminosity, I'll actually will put the card for the other one up here, but luminosity mode is bringing light only, not color. So in a minute, when I want a little more orange around that lamp over there, I'm gonna take the, the normal blending mode of my ambient layer and I'll color back in some color. I want zero hardness, pretty big. So when you have a brush, click your brackets that's just left of your enter key and you the left bracket smaller the right back bigger all right so i want my flow to be at 10 percent. you could push shift one for that okay so you can see how it's not doing anything at all pay attention because if it gets me it'll get you look over here to the right you can see that there's a black box right here so you have white black and when you're on a layer mask over here you need to have white. So if you push X, it'll toggle back and forth. Just keep pushing X. Now say you have some weird color, like you have red, or it will, on this it'll be gray or something. Push D, and it'll automatically go back to black and white, and you can toggle back and forth. So if you're, you know, if you're painting like this, okay, all of a sudden you're like, nah, I don't want that right there. Toggle back and forth, keep your finger there, and you can paint black, white, black, white, black, white. Show, hide, show, hide, show, hide. White reveals, and black hides. And the layer mask, black hides and white 
reveals. So we don't want this to look flashy because you can see how, I'll back up, see how flashy that looks? I don't want that. Actually, I'm gonna put my flow at 20%. If you're doing these and you're trying to hurry, you got, you know, 120 photos because you're delivering out like 35 images and you got window pools and you got all these other things, you don't need a 10% flow or a 5% flow. You can put it on 20 and be moving through these photos pretty quick and not having an issue at all. Now, the luminosity mode, what it does if there is a hard shadow is this little orange right here. See that? Is that nasty orange? Now watch. Bring my brush down. And what that is, is color. So I can take this brush and just kind of blend it in where there's not any kind of crazy harsh colors. Okay, maybe bring in some, some of that orange. See that orange right there, how good that looks? Because that's natural. You don't have to worry about making everything look perfect and white because that's not natural at all. If you ever want any more color on any of this down here, any more orange or stuff like that, just get that. Don't be scared of the layers. Make them work for you because everybody knows that when you go into a house, there's lights on. And when there's lights, there's orange colors coming from it that ca cast on the wall. The reason we do luminosity and normal mode is because we want to be able to control how much color is there because we still want it to look nice, crisp, and clean when we give it to our clients. So now we're going to the window pool. This right here is my window pool. Okay, and then the one right below it is always my safety shot. So I shift and click those and then I click, hold, and drag to the very top where that little green line is at the very top of everything, let go, and now it will be at the front. So you could use the analogy cake, onions, whatever. When you're in uh, Photoshop, every layer, whatever's on top is what is gonna be seen first. So as you paint away one thing, the thing below it's revealed. So don't get confused by the layers, just when you want something on top, and that's the same with your editing skin, or you're trying to edit something out of the background of a portrait that you know a kid was running across there and you don't want that in your photo, make sure that your layer that you're wanting to be on top to cover up something or to, to edit something is on the top. So I want the window pool on top. And window pools are always, always, always dark in mode unless you have to use your safety shot. Your safety shot is on regular mode. So now let's go over here and put our brush all the way up to 90% flow. And we want to put a black layer mask. So Option or Alt and Hide. Look how pretty that is. See how easy that was? No problem at all. Easy. That was it. And all I did was stand right here and pop the flash off in that direction. Easy. So now, flatten image. Now, Command S. Brings it right back into Lightroom. And so now I can do my after edit stuff like my wall parallel corrections and all that other stuff. Bring my exposure down just a little bit. All right, everything looks good. I always have to adjust this. I don't know why. Lightroom, please get on it. You see how this corner's down a little bit? Sometimes it has a little bit of trouble correcting. I mean, it's a wide angle lens. It just happens. So, that's it. That right there, the ceiling looks good and white. There's a little bit of orange coming from the lamp. The window looks good. And you see these reflections and stuff that are right here. That's natural reflections from the light hitting right there that's reflecting off. I mean, nobody's gonna look at that and say, uh, can you make that disappear? They're gonna be completely happy. Look, you can see the lake from this simple little shot that was taken from this bedroom. Easy. So if you enjoyed today's video, please make sure you give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you have any comments or issues when you're trying to shoot, whether it's your equipment or whether it's a process or you want to know, hey, I'm doing you know 30 photos. How can I do a faster workflow? I will be happy to make a video that is tailored specifically to your comments. Once again, give me a thumbs up, 
subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you can see whenever I put out a new video. Thanks and I'll see y'all next time.